player. Uh, thanks to poets and players, and thanks to Philip. And it's great to be here. Lovely to hear Sarah Jane's work. I'm really looking forward to hearing yours. Um, so I'll start with that poem. It's called Seven Time Seven Nineteen in the Evening, and the boy outside New Street Station is singing a lament for us all. He sings for the puffer jacket kids, clothed and camouflaged in swagger. He sings for the electric bike takeaway riders who crisscross the city silent and determined, their two-wheel spinning gig economy. He sings for the husk of a lad who totters along train, tram lines, trailing a sleeping bag, going nowhere good in his own slow time who is lost to us. He sings for the young couples, still in love, touching hands and clasping ready meals, heading back to city apartments to share each other's dreams. He sings for football fans and figures folded in the shadow of doorways. He sings for shift workers, their aching backs, their fallen arches. He sings for the quiet conversation of women on their way to clear offices. He sings for the, is this, isn't this, flirtation of friends. He sings for our mistakes, our wrong turnings, our missed opportunities, the bright future that slipped through our fingers, the better world that disappeared. He sings, and his voice, pure and soft, a gift spirals out to join satellites and stars, seeking nothing but the joy of its own being. An offering to God, if God is listening. And I think we should all be crying now. We should all of us be crying. It's 7.19 in the evening, and the boy outside New Street Station sings. Poetry shouldn't be afraid of addressing big issues. And, and with that in mind, this next poem um, is a poem with a very long title, a short poem. A poem examining the sociological implications of an incident at Wolverhampton swimming baths, where, as I slammed my locker shut, a bloke leaving the changing room swung his bag over his shoulder and his beanie fell to the floor behind him, an incident which I believe without wishing to overstate the case in any way, <laughs> offers hope to all humanity. I shouted, Oi fella, you dropped your hat. And he said, thanks mate, I've lost that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got one, one final poem for you, which, which needs a bit, of, a bit of context setting and a bit of an introduction. Um, this poem was actually was commended in the Verve Poetry Festival competition earlier this year, for which I was very grateful. Christmas 2021, I spent stuck in a house with one of my legs in plastic. And I spent far, far, far too much time scrolling mindlessly through Twitter, uh, finding lots of drops with occasional little nuggets of gold. And for me, one of the nuggets of gold was the story of, that I found of El Vaquita. Now, El Vaquita was, and maybe still is, I hope he still is, um, a street dog who lives in the city of Antofagasta in the north of Chile. And in early 2020, El Vaquita was voted Character of the Year uh, in the local newspaper. And the reason for this was simple. He, there were lots of demonstrations at that time in Antofagasta. And El Vaquita would turn up street dog, feral dog, absolutely every single one of them, always on the side of the demonstrators, never on the side of the police. <laughs> and in late 2019, he was at a demonstration, and a policeman shot him. Uh, fired a shotgun at him, El Vaquita was wounded, ran off, and nobody could help him because nobody owned him, nobody knew where he lived. And they knew he hung out near the harbour, but that was all. And what I love about this story was that what the people of Antofagasta did was they set up a fake demonstration 
that started down near the harbour and went through the city and ended up at a vet's. <laughs> sure enough, the Elvaquita turned up and they got the treaty. You can find on YouTube footage of Elvaquita returned to health and being released uh, down by the harbour where he lives. So it's gorgeous. So um, this poem is his story. Uh, two things for you to know. One, there are some words of Spanish because that's his first language. Um, <laughs> fortunately for me, his English is pretty good, so it made my job quite a bit easier. The second one is that he is a street dog. There is some fairly salty language. It's just the way he is. So this is his story. It's called El Vacuit. I've always been my own master. Howl at the moon if the fancy takes me, yeah, who wouldn't? But mostly, all I ask is a full belly, sunshine, a stroll round the harbour with a weather eye on the pescadores, a nose in the arse of old friends, then siesta in the afternoon. Sniff at lampposts, scratch for fleas, enjoy the quiet life. That's me. I answer to no man. But when the marching starts, my ears prick, I slide like water down alleyways, kaya between legs beneath patting hands to the front line. I have a nose for injustice, teeth for what is wrong. On our own, we're nothing, together, strong. I felt the boots of the oppressor in my ribs before, not having it. No mass, no mass, no mass. A thousand curses on the bastard policia who shoots me. May he never lick his own balls again or send to bitch in heat. May his mother's spaniel piss in his jackboots, smear his silken handkerchiefs with shit. Christmas is a quiet doorway in the shade, a dull throb licking my wounds. But when my people march again, I join them. We are the pack. Whoever we are fighting for this time, venture ends. No turning back. Viva El Vaquita. Viva me. <laughs> Mother of God. May I be born again a dog with two dicks. This is solidarity, people of my barrio. This is you, veterinario, with the kind eyes, hands that are genuine. I won't run. Do what you must. I trust you. Heal me quickly. There is fighting to be done. Cheers, thank you. Meanwhile, and equally in a different part of the wood, there is a poem who is so in, impatient to get, get started. It comes leaping out of the title itself, and it's titled 719 in the evening and the boy outside. What I wrote was this. Sometimes a, a poem seems to take a deep breath and unfurl from stanza to stanza by the sheer momentum of its vision. Without a full stop in sight, it flows rippling over its, its commas and rather finely judged line breaks through shifts and modulations but with no loss of momentum right up to the humbling climax of its ending. This is a state of the nation address with no pomposity, teetering on the edge of metaphysics, but all the stronger for its grounding in the utterly mundane. Steve Pottinger.